this is my first experience of trauma and my first engagement with the healthcare system. So that's interesting. I'll come back to that. So I race out of the door, just in my pajama bottoms. I race round to the carport. I put my hand on the car door handle, and then I start punching the window, trying to get into my own car. Isn't it fascinating what you do when your mind is a bit of a mix? I could have just pulled the door open. Thankfully, I didn't, because that would have resulted in stupidity, I think. Um, what happened next is he gets it into reverse, and he takes me about 15 feet backwards with him, because I'm caught on the wing mirror, and I bounce off of the rockery that we have in the front garden, badly injuring my arm. But adrenals are pumping, I kind of just get on with it, and I bounce back up like a superhero, and I turn to my right, and some, there is something else that's not quite right. And I look to my left, and for sure, there is my second car, also in the road, preparing to drive off. And so another surge comes as trauma takes over, and I run into the middle of the road, because I haven't got any shoes on, I slice the soles of my feet up and hit the deck. My first car drives off, I get up and I turn to my left, and the family car is driving down at me. He's not stopping. So I spin to the left, wave my calves goodbye, and then I sprint, obviously, back up to the house. Now what's interesting next is I start touching technology. I pick up my phone. My, my brain is in such a befuddle that I have no idea how to get through the pin screen. Not only that, I hurt my thumb, so I can't use the bio sensor. My wife, who works in the healthcare system, bearing in mind I also work in the technology sector, so I, can't, I should know that. Neither of us can remember the emergency services number. Triple zero. So once we get through the pin screen, we can't even make the call to come and help us. 111, 223, 1212. What ends up happening is we realize, well, actually, show of hands, how many people know that there's an emergency button on their front screen? How many people have used it? Not one, ah, one hand, bless you, sir. Uh, we don't have a relationship with that interaction yet. So why would we immediately go and press it? I don't know what it does. So the interesting part of that, um, that historically, if you look at the use of triple zero as the Australian method of phoning the emergency services, it's quite a nice story. Um, you remember the radial button on a, on a phone? And then there was that little metal bit at the end of that transaction. Zero was always next to the metal bit. Do you know why? Because if it's dark and you're blind, you always know where the zero is to make the call. Smart. How long have we had this design? Does it still work? That's a good question. So we eventually get through to the emergency services. The lovely lady picks the phone up. I am, I am rambling like an idiot. Um, and I can't remember when she says the service that I want. I can't remember whether I have ambulance insurance. And so that profoundly impacts on the conversation I have with the emergency services person. My wife does it. And at that point, my, my relationship with the healthcare system and, and health insurance particularly um, limits me from the transaction with the mobile device and the conversation that I'm having with the emergency service per, per person. So she makes the decision for me. The ambulance is called. I kind of, um, you know, 10 minutes later, uh, I'm hopping into the... I'm not hopping into the ambulance. I'm stepping gingerly into the ambulance, and my professional me starts taking over. Um, the paramedic flips an A3 pad of paper over and starts writing my details into this giant pad. And I think, well, oh, that's interesting. Then he can't remember how to get in the tough book laptop to enter my details in electronically. And so he leans over and asks the driver for his login details to log into the healthcare network. Something in that transaction concerns me. We get to the hospital, I step into the emergency, uh, the accident and emergency center, and I, I happen to be there during the transition of nurses. So there's a little break. We have half an hour later. The new nurse comes out to greet me. And she says, hi, Mike. Which one of your knees is it? Bearing in mind my arm is bleeding profusely on the floor. Something broke in that experience. Really broke, profoundly broke. And, and then I look back at the transactions or the interactions with technology and ex the experience where I could have been influenced profoundly by non-healthcare products, applications, however you want to describe it. 
specifically my banking app. Now, I, I, went, I left the house with only my phone. Again, there's a signal there. I didn't take any money. I didn't have my wallet. I only took my phone. And, of course, the, my bank knows exactly where I am. Wouldn't it have been lovely to have had a little notification as I stepped through in accident and emergency that says, we know you've just gone to hospital. We hope everything's all right, just in case we're unlocking $50 for the next 24 hours in case you need it. That would have profoundly changed my interaction with the healthcare system. A major worry off my, uh, off my plate. So why is that interesting? Well, it's a story, right? What I've just described to you is a story within which, under which, there are interesting product initiatives, there are interesting relationships with experience and technology, um, and innovation. Now, innovation for me is kind of diluted now. Anytime I hear the word innovation, um, the statement is, it's now owned by corporations, right? So it's diluted. And what that, uh, the way that we refer to that is hypernormalization. Hypernormalization is this burrowing, this furrow uh, or this constraint delivered to you um, that you can't break out of a particular way or model of thinking. Um, First and foremost, it came out of the, uh, the Soviet Union, breakdown of the Soviet Union. Um, they just carried on. Politics was corrupt. Everything was corrupt. They weren't able to change the way they felt. Um, so what? So that's all very well and fair, sir. What's next? Well, storytelling. Storytelling is where all those people who five years ago were excited by innovation have now moved to. And who are the best storytellers in the world? It's Hollywood. Now, Hollywood has frameworks, and this framework is from Christopher Vogler. It's a wonderful, it's called The Writer's Journey. Um, we have an ordinary world. We have three acts. It moves into the special world where things change, and then we reach a new ordinary world, this equilibrium. We have a call to adventure. There is something that changes the way that we think. We meet with a mentor who redirects us and gives us information we haven't previously had. Then we cross the threshold, that moment where we think we know enough to go into this new special world. And of course, there will be ordeals, and there will be a reward at the end of that ordeal, the elixir, the one ring to bind them. Then we will move into the road back where you return and recreate an ordinary world, and you end with this sense of mastery. That's the story. That's the Hollywood framework, storytelling framework. Consistent. And then we have the character arc where all these emotions are expressed all the way through. Fear, doubt, confidence, re-energizing. There's something about that that I was uniquely positioned to look at or feel as I translated that from my film. Uh, I, I have a film um, studies degree and also a prof professional writing, so I was uniquely positioned to know what that meant. And then I moved into technology, and there was something about that that felt familiar, something about that that was quite exciting. And then I overlaid the way that we deliver products, digital products, and I was stunned with the framework and how, ex how that expressed exactly how we deliver digital. For Tiger Spike, other flavors are available, we start with this experience definition. We want to know more about what it is we're building. Then we move into design and build. There will be ordeals. There will be enemies. There will be new people to talk to. All with the goal to finding product mastery. And that character arc is absolutely, absolutely in line with the emotional journey that these businesses and individuals will go on. I say to you, and I'm confident, there are no new stories. Why? Because the framework tells us so. So, um, those who were in Mario's presentation yesterday will have done that lovely exercise about name or describing a plot in one line. So, I, I posit to, the, to the, my learned guests here, are there two movies that can be described by the single plot line? So, Home Alone, an emotionally vulnerable male, Lead finds himself clashing with his closest family members. Alienated from the group, he becomes separated just as a pack of criminals descends on his location. There are no new stories. What's the other film? At least one. Die Hard. You would never put the two together, but they are the same story. Overprotective single father falls into dangerous situations in search of a, uh, an abducted child. 
Yes, very well, good, good, taken. You would not put them in the same category. An old, bitter man in changing times befriends his young neighbor who helps him overcome his cynicism and dislike of people after the death of his wife. Very quickly, up. You would not put them in the same category. They are the same stories. So what I'm trying to describe to you is that through Hollywood, that maps perfectly into the way that we express ourselves through digital delivery, through business change. There are archetypes, heroes, mentors, threshold guardians, heralds, shapeshifters, shadows, and tricksters who form that story. You do not get anywhere unless you buy into the energy of that hero. Threshold guardians, those people who lock the door until you are convinced by their message. They are convinced by your energy and your commitment to unlock the threshold. Shall we do that in organizations now? Have a look at the products, the successful products that you have been a part of. They do not exist unless you have a hero or a product owner maybe who embodies the energy and the passion behind the delivery of that product. If you do not see that individual around the table, that product experience will not succeed. Mentors, CEOs, stakeholders, people who can lean in and redirect. There is always one, always one, who sits there with their arms folded at the start of the project and says no. They are a threshold guardian. We've seen them before. We have tools, narrative, framework to get beyond the threshold guardian. They will always be there. In fact, I say, if they're not there, you should have them there, because otherwise your narrative is incomplete. Herald, a conference, things you learned at a conference may just redirect the way that you think. Shapeshifters, shadows, those evil entities who will always distress a product. And then tricksters, I've been a trickster in our business. I've also been a mentor and I've been a hero. If you are a smart digital deliverer, if you are a smart team player, you will shape yourself to the role that is most appropriate to get the best result for the product that you're delivering. Storytelling. It already exists. Hollywood has done it before pretty well. We should learn from the language they use and the archetypes that we see. Uh, we've done that before, I'm running out of time. A summary screen, no presentation is complete without a bright orange summary screen. Are there really new stories? Or are they just the same stories revisited? That's my question. Effective leaders will read the plot and shape to a required, required archetype. I have seen that happen many, many times. If you are missing something on the journey of your delivery in the story or the narrative, you have to find it quickly. Like journey mapping, the entire story, once you have that framework, can be utterly empowering. We know it's going to be difficult two-thirds of the way through. There will be an ordeal, but the guarantee is we will get through it, and we will get through it together, and we will emerge with the great sword of wherever the story takes you. I love uh, Lord of the Rings, by the way, so all of my kind of references are the one ring to bind you and Gandalf the Grey, clearly. Um, and consider archetypes. I love seeing a threshold guardian. It means we're healthy. That person who's going to test a hero, brilliant. Don't worry about it. That's part of the narrative. If you don't have a hero, someone you believe in, you're not going to get out of the blocks. If you don't have a herald, that signal that says, time to change, you need to do something, you're not going to get out of the blocks. Hollywood has done it before. The narrative is there. The framework is there. The characters are there. Thank you.